Everybody keeps saying Damian Lillard is going to be traded to the Knicks. Miami is the obvious one, and Bam is my dog. Brooklyn is obvious one is another obvious one because Mikael Bridges is my dog too. So the Damian Lillard situation is getting very heated, actually, because Dame is starting to give ultimatums to the Portland Trailblazers, and it's almost as if he's assuming that the Portland Trailblazers handle this in a particular way. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all that out of the way, cue the intro. So we have a $1,000 giveaway from Prize Picks. They're giving five of us a chance to win $1,000. All you have to do is click the link in the description down below to sign up for a chance to be selected to make a five pick flex to win $1,000. Use my promo code microphone to get up to a $100 deposit match on Prize Picks. Let's get to the video. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on everybody? The Portland Trailblazers have reaffirmed their commitment to doing whatever it takes to build a contender around Damian Lillard. They've been doing this over the past two years and isn't it blatantly obvious i mean just look at the moves they've been making ever since the 2022 nba trade deadline where their first trade they sent norman powell and robert covington to the la clippers for eric bledsoe's corpse justice winslow and keon johnson and a 2025 second round pick they mainly did this to cut costs so they didn't have to pay norman powell a five-year 90 million dollar contract their next trade was trading one of their franchise cornerstones sending CJ McCollum to the New Orleans Pelicans along with Larry Nance Jr. and Tony Snell and got Josh Hart, Thomas Sadoransky, Nikhil Alexander Walker and New Orleans 2022 first round pick. The reason why this trade was made was probably for the first round pick. Then once again they would move Nikhil Alexander Walker and Thomas Sadoransky in a trade with the Utah Jazz in which they would receive Joe Ingles. And Joe Ingles didn't even suit up for the Portland Trail Blazers for a single moment. Now the Portland Trail Blazers were so bad that they were able to get the seventh overall pick in last year's NBA draft. And with that pick, they selected Shaden Sharp. And it made a lot of sense at this point, man. Damian Lillard had an injury plagued season. He only played 29 games. It made so much sense for the Portland Trail Blazers to perform so horribly. And then they would go out and try to build a better team around Damian Lillard. They would also sign Gary Payton II and bring in Jeremy Green and this would be the extent of Portland's ability to build a contender around Damian Lillard. They would go into the season and Damian Lillard would average 32 points per game off of 46% from the field and 37% from three, without a doubt his best season to date as a 32 year old. Once again, during the trade deadline, they'd make some peculiar decisions. They would trade Josh Hart to the New York Knicks and would receive Cam Reddish, Svi Mikhailuk and Ryan Arcidia Chono, which I totally botched by the way and we get a first round pick that was lottery protected from the Knicks, which is a good move if you're rebuilding. They would also trade Gary Payton II to the Golden State Warriors, essentially saying that, hey, that Gary Payton move to acquire him, that was not the right decision for us. The Blazers didn't really give Gary Payton II a chance, to be honest. Gary Payton played in only 15 games and his defense was pretty good. You could say that he was the eighth best player in the Trail Blazers rotation, but this is clearly not a decision you made if you're trying to contend in the now. Through it all, Damian Lillard made it seem like he was going to stay loyal to the Portland Trail Blazers. Once they got the number three pick, that's when things got really interesting. You see, Damian Lillard is expecting the Portland Trail Blazers to trade this pick. And he said it multiple times. I want to have an opportunity to win in Portland. We got an opportunity asset-wise to build a team that can compete. If we can't do that, then it's a separate conversation we would have to have. If that that doesn't sound like, yo, trade the number three pick or else. I don't know what is. The presumed number three overall pick in this year's NBA draft, at least currently, is Scoot Henderson. Currently, it seems like the Charlotte Hornets are favoring Brandon Miller as opposed to Scoot Henderson, primarily because of his potential fit next to LaMelo Ball. And don't get me wrong, this would create a gigantic log jam at the guard position between Damian Lillard, Shaden Sharp, and Fernie Simons, and Scoot Henderson. But this is a very big problem because this year's 
year's NBA draft is perceived to be a three player draft. And I'm not saying only three players are gonna be good from this draft, but there are three prospects that are gonna be selected at the top of the draft that you should be excited about. The first one being Victor Webanyama. The second one obviously being Brandon Miller. And the third one being Scoot Henderson. One of those players, mainly Scoot Henderson or Brandon Miller is going to fall to the Portland Trailblazers, which means the Portland Trailblazers have a huge decision to make. In previous videos, we took a look at the Portland Trailblazers entire team. And when you look at this team's depth chart and you look at the age of each and every player, the decision that needs to be made is very obvious. If you take a look at this entire team, there is only one player that is over the age of 29, Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard is also coming off of his best season to date. Damian Lillard is also on a contract extension that has yet to kick in. My favorite narrative is how Damian Lillard is sitting there saying, look at how loyal I am. I'm playing on the Portland Trailblazers who are giving me a huge two year, $121 million contract just to stay there until my age 36 season, which is the 2026 to 2027 season. I just love the narrative surrounding Damian Lillard and his loyalty. You go to most players in the NBA today and you say, hey, you're probably not going to win a ring, but hey, we could pay you $60 million annually and most will be content. I mean, why do you think Ben Simmons is so okay with just sitting at the end of the Brooklyn Nets bench and not doing anything and just collecting a check? Why do you think Brad Bradley Beal keeps on re-signing with the Washington Wizards. It's pretty hard to turn the money down. Bradley Beal is worth nearly half a billion dollars. Yeah, did you know that? By the end of his upcoming contract extension, Bradley Beal would have made $428 million in the NBA. I'm not saying they're bad people for this at all whatsoever. I would do the same if I'm being honest. That's generational wealth. That's pretty much being able to solve any financial problem you ever had. That's being able to take private jets wherever you want to go. That's buying a bunch of income properties and just sitting on your once you're retired. That's the ultimate definition of financial freedom. Very hard to turn that down, take millions and millions and millions of dollars less just for an opportunity to compete for a championship. But now we're getting into the Portland Trailblazers options and they're getting really interesting. One is if they did trade Dame, where would they go? And the other is if they traded the number three overall pick, who would they acquire? Now, depending on who the Portland Trailblazers can get, I would say it may be worth departing with the number three pick pick. Although I don't really think it's something I'd be very comfortable with. In the past, there was a suggestion that maybe the Portland Trailblazers could package the number three overall pick and get Pascal Siakam in return. More recently, a Clippers beat reporter, Law Murray and NBA insider Sam Viceni, who is from The Athletic, discussed the plausibility of getting Paul George. And if you really think about it, I think this is a decision that makes a lot of sense. The Los Angeles Clippers are are not a lottery team whatsoever. They've only had one lottery pick in the NBA draft since 2011, but they've only won three playoff series since 2015. And this might be the end of the Kawhi Leonard and Paul George era. It's a very tough situation because last year you had Kawhi Leonard going through an entire season, load managing the whole season. And then when time came for the NBA playoffs where you were gonna see Kawhi Leonard actually try, he was injured once again. And I know that's a very insensitive way to put it. And I know I'm not necessarily looking at the human aspect of basketball here. I do admit I'm looking at this strictly from a business lens. And from a business standpoint, you have to ask yourself, if you go into this upcoming season, you trust these two to get through an entire playoff series and stay healthy. If you're the Los Angeles Clippers, if the Portland Trailblazers pull up and say, hey, we'll give you the number three overall pick. And in return, you give us Paul George. You say no to that because at the end of the day, Scoot Henderson theoretically would work fine with Kawhi Leonard. The Los Angeles Clippers have been looking for their point guard for a while. And at the very worst, if Kawhi Leonard and Scoot Henderson don't work out, then once Kawhi Leonard leaves, at least you have Scoot Henderson to build around for the future. I don't think there's a better asset for the Clippers to get for Paul George than Scoot Henderson. But would this be something that is worth it for the Portland Trailblazers? Pretty much going all in on the next two or three years of Damian Lillard, assuming that he could keep this 
production up and it's sustainable and you're trading away a player that is seemingly going to be a star for a player that is already an established star but is 33 years old there's so much at risk the ultimate reward i think is the trailblazers being a fifth seed at the very best come on now we're talking about jeremy grant yusuf nurkic Damian lillard paul george and Fernie simons i mean that's a pretty cool lineup i think they could surprise some teams and maybe be the number four seed maybe and maybe they could keep that up for a year maybe two is it worth giving up the number three pick to do that or is it more intelligent to take your franchise cornerstone who has been in trade rumors for seemingly forever and trade him at the peak of his value by the way coming off of the best season of his career for a plethora of first round picks i mean i'm talking about a kevin durant-esque haul from a team that's willing to pay for this and if you dangle damian lillard out there to the miami heat you best believe they're going to be offering tyler hero maybe kayla martin and multiple future first round picks to get damian lillard on their roster you offer damian lillard to the philadelphia 76ers who james harden's reportedly torn between the Houston Rockets and their strip clubs and the Philadelphia 76ers and contending. You offer Damian Lillard to the 76ers and they'll probably be willing to give up multiple first round picks from their future and possibly one of their younger pieces and Tobias Harris in return for Damian Lillard in order to make that contract work. And at the end of the day, what's more intelligent? Do you look at the amount of youth you have on your roster? I mean, it's insane how young this Blazers roster is. Jaden Sharp and Jabari Walker are 20 years old. Keon Johnson's 21 years old. Kevin Knox, Nasir Little, and Cam Reddish are 23 years old. And Fernie Simons is 24 years old. I know some of these players have shown a very limited ceiling so far, but imagine drafting Scoot Henderson, pairing him with Anthony Simons, seeing what Shaden Sharp can become. Maybe you trade the odd man out out of those three. Really investing a season into developing your young core, having a plethora of assets for the future that's the intelligent decision here and it seems like Damian Lillard is coming to grips with this when Damian Lillard was asked where he would go he even said he'd like to go to the Miami Heat out of those teams which one would you be like eh, that's not too bad <laughs> Miami obviously and I think there's a middle ground here if Damian Lillard is willing to accept it and that's drafting Scoot Henderson or Brandon Miller just having him develop alongside Damian Lillard and understanding that hey Dame you can still play for the Blazers but you're the oldest man here it's time for you to graduate you don't have to graduate but we're gonna be focused on developing this talent but is that really the move do you really want Damian Lillard consuming each and every possession while you're trying to develop your young core you want Damian Lillard throwing up 21 shots per game which is quite literally what he did this past year and taking possessions away from Scoot Henderson, Cam Reddish, and Anthony Simons. What would you do if you were in this position? Let me know in the comment section down below. Would you trade the pick or would you trade Dame? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.